this isn't something that I figured out, you know, and, and just, I failed a lot. And leadership for me has definitely been the hardest thing to learn, the biggest obstacle I faced. So this has taken six years. We're still learning every day. But I think we've really been able to figure out what the millennials really need to be engaged in the workplace. And I know this works because with our second location, we completely, you know, replicated our culture from our first. And I hardly ever get to go to that location. It's six hours away um, from where I live. So it works because it's working there. Number one is measurement. They want to know how the work they're doing every single day, how is it affecting the bigger picture? They want to know that what they're doing matters. So we survey our clients. So after every cleaning, we will ask how was the service? We get that answer. We have a wall in our company called the Wow Wall, and we post positive survey results on this wall. They get instant gratification every single day. They know how they're doing. And then their pay is based on these survey results. So they can get anywhere from a poor rating, which is minimum wage, all the way up to a perfect rating, which is $11 an hour as a college student. And there are different increments going from the poor to the perfect. And then we have these other awards called above and beyond awards, where if they just go completely above and beyond the client's expectations, then they can get bonuses on top of that perfect rating. So we figured out a way to give them instant results. Now, when you think about that as a business owner, I can always see how I'm doing. I can see how the work that I put in every day, how it's affecting this bigger picture. You have to give the same thing to your, to your team, your employees. So measurement, instant gratification is huge. Second is safe communication. They want to feel like they can tell you anything and not lose their job. We've created a place that is so safe. They can tell us any idea that they have. They can give us poor feedback and not fear that they're going to lose their job. So how do you create this environment? Well, number one is they have to know how to communicate. They're not taught how to communicate in a class. So we have this thing, when they first start working, we call it the sandwich shop. And what that is, is how do you say something difficult to somebody? You start with something nice, you sandwich in the part that you don't, you know, that, that's not so nice, and then you end with something nice. We teach them how to make a, that sandwich. And then they practice talking to one another that way. And then that way, when there are issues at work, instead of keeping it bottled inside, they voice, you know, what's going on. And so we make it from the very beginning very clear that we want that communication. We also are really great about tell us what you want to see. You know, give us your feedback. And then the most important part, though, is when they do that, you have to do something with it. You can't just say thanks. And you can't just implement every single idea. So you have to tell them why you can't implement it. Or if you do implement it, thank them and give them recognition and create a place where people want to give feedback because they know that it's actually going somewhere. Purpose. You know, they want to feel like the work they're doing every day matters. They want to know how it's contributing to this bigger picture. And that's what we all want. Now, the problem with this generation is that they don't know how to define success. They don't know if it's financial? Is it the salary? We think working for a cause they believe in, working for something that they feel proud of, that they feel a part of, it is helping us get to this bigger picture where we want to be. Everyone knows that the company has a vision. They wouldn't sign up to work there if they didn't know where the company is headed. But do you make people feel important? Do they know that their work every single day is directly related to whether you guys achieve that vision as a team or not? So something that is really big in Student Made, our core, we have 10 core values. During the interview process, we test these 10 things. We ask a lot of questions that will let us know, does this person fit in the culture? And then once they get in, all of their evaluations are based on these 10 things alone. It's not on the cleaning skill. You can train someone to clean, but you can't train them to have integrity. But we teach them about values and value-based decision-making. We teach them that you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. Who are you surrounding yourself with? They realize because of our culture, they're with people every day who have similar values. They see what you can achieve that way. We grew from 75 employees to 250 in one year. And I really believe it's because we implemented these values. And the best part is that now the values guide the company. They guide decisions. 
So we are able to give them autonomy in their jobs because we say, if you don't know how to handle something, think about our 10 core values and you should know the answer. And we're going to give you the authority to make the decision as long as you're following the values. Some of our employees are 14 and 15 years old and they're making decisions without a manager. They want to be proud. They want to feel a sense of pride. So how do we do this? Well, there are a lot of things that we do. We're very involved in our community. Um, the last six years, we've donated over half a million dollars in services to local nonprofits. We clean free for cancer patients. We require that our employees volunteer twice a semester for a nonprofit. They're proud to work for this company. So you got to give them something to be proud of, whether that's incorporating philanthropy into your, into your work. If we can do it for cleaning, anyone can do it. Human skills, this is, I think, the second largest one. So we're, we're taught how to, how to finish the task, right? How to do the job. We can do it faster than anyone. But we don't know how to be human. But we can do this, we can accomplish the task. We can do the task. We're not taught human skills. I never thought we had to do a training on how to call a client. So it's, you know, we have to create these, these learning opportunities. So our training, before we even get to the cleaning part, it's all about these human skills. We actually spend more time training for that than we do the actual cleaning. Confidence. This is the largest issue right now with millennials is they aren't confident because we don't let them fail. We keep them in a bubble. We do that with our children and then we do it in the workplace. So how on earth can they become confident? Can they really learn the skill if they're not given the opportunity to, to try it and fail? When you think about any time you ever learned something, it was probably attached to a huge failure. And what's the worst that could happen? I learned early on that I had to build the business to run without me. I had to work on it and not in it. And I'm really glad I learned that early on because I know that's the reason we've grown so quickly. And I don't, I'm not in the day-to-day -day at all. And it's, the company is less than six years old. And it's because I gave that leadership team, I watched them fail. I knew that they were going to fail. And I had to sit and watch, and it was so hard to do, but I knew that they would learn something. So those are what I see to be the biggest things that they need, the biggest obstacles that we really have to work to remove. The largest one by far being failure.